This conference will now be recorded. All right, so we have to start with demand management. What are the different yes. in that requirement class, requirement types, and discussion of strategies and lot sizes? Yes. I have logged in into your account today. Okay. Uh, actually, I have requested for uh, any kind of SOP. If we have any kind of SOP for uh, step by step, do we have anything? Actually, you told me that. Uh, for configuration. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have it, but I have it on ECC, but more or less steps will be same. Okay. 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 I will share it to you. Sure, sure. That will work. So, what is your password to log in? Uh, let me check. Uh, I it might be Naresh at the one, two, three, I think so. Naresh one, two, three. Captain, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, yeah, I am able to log it. Okay. All right. So we will go in the production. The shop floor will be our configuration, the main steps. Okay. Material requirement planning, capacity, production planning. So under production planning, under production, production planning, we have demand management. Okay, so whenever someone says that okay, demand management in PP, uh, by that we mean how do we manage our forecast? Okay, or if we have any previous historical data that okay, we sold X number of goods in month of January, Feb, and March, now we have to plan for April how to plan it, right? So, based okay. on that data, planners will calculate if i have sold 1000 goods it increased to 1050 in uh, feb and in march it has increased to maybe 1500 now i'm planning for april so based on that particular data they will see if they want to uh, produce 1800 goods or 2000 goods okay so that it can be sold properly without sitting in the inventory that is the main okay. concern of the planets that nothing should be over planned and nothing should be over manufactured uh, if we over plan we will over plan our raw materials also and we have to pay vendors unnecessarily right yes if you if you buy and keep things which is not required and that is uh, putting more cost towards that items all right so we have an option to enter the forecast in the system called as planned independent requirements okay. okay this is one way another way is sales and operation planning which i will teach uh, maybe at the end of the course okay but we will start okay. off with planned independent requirements what are the things okay. which is required here what are the things which we will uh, see influence this okay. so like i said um, in, in PP, we have two main strategies. Uh, main two strategies uh, are make to order, MTO, or make to stock, MTS. Correct. So if we are talking okay. about make to uh, stock, we have different planning strategies under that. Okay. And if we are talking about make to order, we have different planning strategies for that. And system will behave differently in both the cases. Okay. So I have MTO and I have MT, MTS. 
okay so make to order what we will cover is 20 and 50 strategy these are strategy uh, number 20 and number 50 okay let me put it here and then in this make to stock we have 10 we have 11 and then we have 40 okay three different strategies how they behave what are the different uh, execution parts behind each of them if the master data is different how it is different we need to understand those things okay, okay. so when i'm talking about strategy the strategy is defined and controlled by requirement types and requirement classes okay i'll have okay. to open two, two windows to make you understand okay. i'll open one more window sure is pro production production planning demand management, demand management. Yeah. requirement okay. Okay. okay so here we have different requirement types okay if i go to any of these strategies Right. I have requirement classes and requirement types here. Okay. Requirement types for independent requirements, I have requirement classes. Okay. Okay. So these are the requirement types which are already defined in the system. All right. Let me see if we have it. LFS. So if you see LSF is make to stock production. This is my requirement okay. type and 100 is my requirement class. Okay. Same thing. If I go to strategy 10 make to stock production, I have LSF as my requirement type and requirement class is 100. So this entry okay. is coming from requirement types and requirement class. Okay. All right. So if I have to map something. I will go to new entries. I'll put as LSF and the, re the required class towards this. Okay. So like somebody has created a Z custom. So I have not seen uh, many customs, but customization is happening under the strategy level. Okay. So depending upon the client's requirement, if there is any custom requirement, they will do that. Now, what okay. is the difference? What is the difference uh, between 10, 11, and 40? Okay. So 10 is what? L so uh, actually, I I have already googled it. Uh, MTO and M MTS. Just uh, confirm mm -hmm. me whether I'm if I'm uh, correct. MTO mm -hmm. in the sense, uh, uh, we have to take uh, on uh, monthly average like. Uh, you know, if we have uh, 10, 15, 20, we need to take um, average and uh, we need to, according to that, according to our uh, previous uh, data, hmm. we need to uh, make the production planning in MTO. In the MTS, uh, uh, when the demand request, uh, from that demand, we need to, uh, means production, we need to start. So you can be partially correct, but this is totally a business requirement. Okay. Okay, okay so business has to decide that they want to take average or how they want to plan in terms of mto and in terms of mts also so what i have seen so far in all the clients which where i have implemented sap pp so what they do is they have an excel sheet based on the historical data of maybe like a one year two years okay they know how much they produce and how much is consumed in the market they are very well aware of that okay so if they produce uh say for thousand pieces or thousand kgs that gets consumed and next month they uh produce little more so they will they will give us an excel or they will have an excel for themselves and once they are aware of the transaction called md61 
where they need to enter the forecast and based on the forecast what you get is planned orders so planned orders will be converted to production orders and they manufacture goods according to the forecast what they end i will come to that okay. part so yeah. what you said it could be uh, correct for one of the business requirements but it could be wrong for the other uh, business okay because totally okay. totally it's a business call how they want to go okay, okay. <clears throat> So we have LSF for 10, BSF for 11, and VSF for 40. 40. Okay. These are my requirement types. These are my requirement types for PIRs. Okay. Planned independent requirements. Okay. Right. I'll show you something interesting. One minute. Sure. Yeah. So now you have seen this is LSF, this is 100, right? And if I am creating a customer order, it would be of a KSL type. Okay. There is a customer okay. requirement also. Okay. Now if I go to 20 and I open this, I don't see a requirement class and requirement types. Okay. Why we don't have it? Because make to order says that I'm not depending upon my forecast. Okay. I'm I'm waiting for my customer orders, make to order. So as soon as I get my order from a customer, I will start my production. It says that MTO. Okay, okay. All right. So why and when it will be used? Why you know? Like okay, if I get a customer order, then I will start because I don't want to uh, keep the goods uh, ready. So there are some customizable products, okay? Like if you go for a Bentley car or a Mercedes Maybach, you can customize many things in that. Like, okay, you want a different flooring, you want a ceiling, you want a, a wooden steering. Those things are offered by the different vendors. Okay, if I, if I make a car already, which customer does not want or does not have a required taste then that car he or she will not buy so i'm yes. waiting for the order once i get my order i will start the production that is one case okay, okay. and the other case is i cannot enter if i'm using strategy 20 for my finished good and i'm trying to enter the forecast the forecast will give me an error that the strategy which you are using is not allowed for entering forecast okay so we will see those scenarios also by entering and this is one interview question also uh, so panel will ask you that okay i'm using strategy 20 now i'm entering forecast it is not allowed why it is happening so you can uh, you can simply say that strategy 20 is purely make to order and the requirement types and requirement class are not available okay it will not allow you okay okay and it will have a customer requirement type of ke so these things we don't have to actually remember uh, but you can remember that lsf is for 10 bsf is for 11 and 40 is vsf this is most commonly used under pp okay lsf 10, 11 and 40 lsf bsf and vsf i have written it for you here okay all right and the strategy 50 we have requirements again okay and this works little differently than our, our other strategies okay the planning without final assembly this is required when we are uh, ready with our raw materials we are ready with our semi-finished goods but now we are waiting for the final product order okay say for example okay. you have material say for example you have material a which is your final product okay. final product 
you have under this B, which is semi finished. And then you have uh, C and D as raw materials. Now, what will happen if I'm using strategy 50 on this? All right. So I can enter the demand, first of all. That is one different thing. Okay, I can enter a demand. I'll mention it here. Okay, or here. Delete 50. So my requirement is VSE. VSE. Okay, if I'm using strategy 50, I can enter my demand and demand will be of VSE type. So final pro product A, say for example, I've got 100 pieces. 100 piece as my forecast. So when okay. I run MRP, what will happen? We get a planned order for 100 quantities, considering one is to one ratio. So for 100 pieces, I need 100 pieces of semi finished products. Okay. And then I will get raw materials, say again 100 and 100. So what will happen? I can go ahead and convert this plan order to a production order. Okay, I can do that. I can convert purchase requisitions. Purchase requisitions are for the vendors. Okay. Purchase requisitions. But I will get a planned order here also. Okay. This will be non convertible. Let me put it here. 100 pieces non convertible, non convertible planned order. Okay. If I try to convert this planned order like I did for semi finished into production order, it will not allow. Okay. It will not allow until I until sales order is received. Okay. Are you able to understand this? I will explain. You don't worry. Can you can you just think why it is like that? Uh, final product be semi semi finished and uh, raw materials. Right? So if the requirement we need, uh, based on the requirement, we need to uh, provide the, uh, uh, what I mean to say, delivery for the production. Uh, we need to plan according to that requirement. So you are partially correct, but let me give you the uh, pinpoint answer. So this strategy 50 says that I can do anything or I can produce and keep my semi finished raw materials okay for my final product but i cannot start my production until unless i receive my sales order so this is dependent again on the sales order but the under part okay or the bomb under this can be exploded and converted to production order or purchase requisitions so okay. uh, what is the business case for this so i had a client okay who is manufacturing tractors and they have different kind of tractors which is ac and non-ac air conditioned okay. okay okay so in air conditioned we receive uh very few orders in that case my ac is only the cabin is only ac but remaining parts are same right so okay. my yeah. uh, assembly the body the tires okay uh engine everything is same that's the Cabin is different, AC and non-AC cabins. Okay. Now what I'll do is, if I if I have hundred pieces as my fifty for no uh, AC AC unit uh, tractors, okay. what I can do is I can plan and keep everything ready as soon as a customer gives me an uh, order that okay I need fifty pieces. What I'll do is I'll just manufacture assemble. I I have everything ready. I'll just assemble it and give it to the customer quickly rather than again starting okay. from my scratch that i'll produce the assembly and then i'll get the raw materials i'll i'll get nuts and bolts and then i fix it no i'll have my tractor partially ready but as soon as i get my order i'll just fix the ac cabin and i can give it to the customer 
got it okay so the 50 is required when business is ready with everything is just waiting for the sales orders okay so that they don't um, uh, they don't produce and keep it in the warehouse they can just wait for sales order deliver it quickly okay, okay. so strategy 40 so in strategy 40 what we do so let me explain you maybe when we are doing but just give me, let me give you a brief also so okay. 20 is purely sales order okay sales order and then mrp and then planned orders i'm sorry okay so once i get my sales order i will run the mrp okay sales okay. Uh, sales order mrp and i get my planned order and then planned order can be converted to production order or process order okay so this okay. is my complete cycle in 40 what happens is i enter pirs okay i run mrp i get my planned orders and then it is converted to production order or process order okay this this okay. this is one cycle another 